my wonderful friends. Ah, uh, yeah, hopefully this is, well, welcome. It's Sunday, I hope. Hopefully this is live as ever. Can you let me know in the chat if everything is okay? And how has your week been? Well, two weeks. It's two weeks since I've seen you and yeah, everybody, thank you so much for all your kind words and messages. I haven't been able to answer them all and I won't go into detail on that just now. Um, but thank you all. Um, those those who know, know what I'm talking about. Anyway, today I think it is about time we got to finishing my elephant. So hopefully this just should just be a little project to finish up. If you haven't already, well let's let's show you him right now. This is where we've got to with my elephant. We're just finishing off some of the detailing. Excuse I. <coughs> Oh, hay fever has been a killer just now, but I can't complain. It's because spring's springing into life, finally. Um, yeah, so we'll finish off our tiger. Now, slight, slight news, newsy thing. Um, I have, for if we want another project after this, I haven't linked it. Oh, yeah, elephant. First of all, elephant. Link to the elephant if you want the stencil to create this little guy. Link is in the comments. I know some of you have already started work on some kind of an elephant, and I'm loving seeing your work. Um, but I have started work on another stencil, so I'll give you a quick peek just now. And there he is. So this is what hopefully another project will have for the future will be a nice tiger I was gonna say dragon a nice tiger so yay and um, that's an idea for another project and we still have a maker's box to do and we still have a Shiba Inu Hakanama project I don't even know how to say it um oh, excuse juice much thanks to my mum for getting me she got me this for Christmas because in the stream I complained that my coffee had gone cold but oh, insulated cup see when you're sunning yourself in the garden which I did yesterday for the first time in years I took the sun lounger outside and I sat in the garden and I just read a book it's so nice for all the other rubbish that's going on it's so nice just to sit back and think there is nothing that really needs doing there's stuff I could be doing I'm just gonna sit outside and watch watch the queen bees try and find places to set up home and it was lovely but yeah this sitting out in the sun keeps your drink cool awesome might have to try it with cocktails soon <laughs> Okay, check in the chat. We have Lily Tree in the house. Oh no, stream was claiming to be scheduled in six hours time. I might have messed up setting up the stream, but it seems to be running, so hopefully you'll all be able to find us. Uh, Lena's in the house. Hello there. Awesome to see you. And Sky, Sky Wolf Animation. Hello, indeed. Long time no see. Good to see you. Uh, the Makers. Hi there. Um, I look really well. Thank you so much. I have been... Um, for the past, well, all the time I try and make sure and get out and walk. The dogs need walking. But myself, well, the dog, um, myself and Mia have been walking, um, going on new adventures and trying to make sure where we can to get the 10,000 steps a day in, in new adventures. And yeah, okay, here's here's a silly piece of advice, but I was super missing. Usually, oh, elbows hit the table. Usually this time of the year, I've got like, not too far away but I've got rivers beaches all sorts of places that I would drive to in a short period of time but to go for a walk and it's not clear with our lockdown restrictions whether we're allowed to drive to a place for a walk so I've been super missing being able to find rivers and being able to get on the beach and paddle so what I've been doing is I've been using Google Maps, uh, the street view and the earth view, satellite, <laughs> the, word, the satellite view to look in my local area at places that I can get to and just have a real proper nosy. Is that like a tiny path? Is that something? And yeah, so I've been, I've found some beautiful rivers. I can't, I haven't found a way down to them yet, but that'll happen. But so far, tiny streams, tiny, what we call burns in Scotland. I did potentially jump over a tiny burn 
a very muddy burn, sort of possibly duck under a fence and found an awesome new place to walk that nobody else will go because it's a field that we're not supposed to be walking in. But yeah, using the street view, I'm just making sure I'm not, obviously I'm not going into any farmer's fields, I'm not going in anywhere that's active, I'm not disturbing any wildlife, I'm not even opening any gates, but I'm... Um, I'm finding little out of the way places to go to so that's <laughs> that's been pretty awesome so yeah use google maps use street view use satellite view and there's lots in my area there's old disused railway lines that are wonderful paths to go there's little fox trails alongside rivers that are just nice and there's no people which is cool <laughs> um Skywolf is making a needle felted dragon puppet. You know I'm going to approve of that. I have to see that. I'll make the makers is Steffi today. If you don't know, <laughs> we have Sophie and Steffi are the makers. That's what the two S's are. That it's not a case that they can't <laughs> they can't um they can't spell. But it's for the two the two makers are are S's. <laughs> uh, Charms by Marie. Hello there. Uh, Lena, um, other way around, it's Mia I've got left now. Um, she's doing okay. She's very good, worryingly good. A little, a little sad and a little bit clingy, but we're doing super long walks to tire each other out and doing really good. Uh, Skywolf, missing my local craft store and stall. Yeah, if that's something that you'd got into the hang of, I can see that would be really nice if it's working. I never got the hang of craft shows. <laughs> um, oh, um, Steffi, thank you so much. Yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay, Skywolf, yes, I lost Ben last week. Um, kidney failure. So, yeah, sucks a lot. <laughs> anyway, right, enough of that before I start blubbing all over you. Um, but yeah, where did I get to? You let me know how you're all getting on and we will zoom into the fancy two camera bit and get finishing up on this little guy because I'm really wanting to get him done. I'm thinking I want to do a little bit more shading to define his trunk a little bit more that's kind of blending into the background and perhaps a little shading at the side of his tusks I want to finish up the fancy patterns and I was thinking I wasn't sure about doing the the leg cuffs oh you can see my hand here I wasn't sure about doing the leg cuffs thinking you know that's it, like um in Aladdin you know with the genie that's the sign of slavery or whatever but I'm thinking of it's jewelry it's a sign of how she's been decorated um so yeah <laughs> so that that's my ideas but let me know what you all think and yeah well I'll dive in and do a little bit of the shading first because I'm not filling up for totally fiddly <laughs> stuff yet. So I'm going to use tiny pinches of black just to darken down some, to take, obviously black, dark colours take things back as well, um, and light colours to bring them forward. So we want to take a little bit of this behindness back. And it's amazing how much just a teeny tiny bit can make a difference. Maybe too much even there. <laughs> so we'll just, I can, yeah it's not felted in strongly yet so yeah I just want like it's not so easy to do but I want it kind of darker at the trunk and then to fade out slightly so we still see the beautiful colours and I think that's helped yeah that defines it a bit more and we'll just come in here again in this little area between the trunk and the tusk define that up a teeny bit more and it's just a fraction and yeah that that makes a difference uh, right and underneath the trunk and yeah if anybody if anybody's been making elephants I've seen some of your work as I said and loving it so good guys so anybody wants to share their work at any time pop it onto Ben McFuzzy Legs or Pam Duffy's crafty friends uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, just a tiny bit of bit of something there makes makes all the difference, I think. So 
so let's let's pop these tusks out a bit I think that one got a bit wide anyway so a little bit of black here will help I am not the best at drawing or 2d things so I, I'm learning as I go along here as well but I think yes this would be the tusk would go behind that bit of his trunk so we'll just do a little bit there and also his ear would be slightly in front of his body so this would be a little darker i think this is helping he was um for those of you who missed part one and part two which can be found in my videos i did the elephant first of all and he was looking awesome and then i did the background and i was starting to hate him but we did a little bit of brightening things up a little bit of shading and he just started to pop again so i was starting to hate him a little bit less Sorry little guy. I don't mean I hate you, but <laughs> I wasn't liking it. And I'm also I tend to work on a light source coming down from this side. So there would be more highlights down this side and more dark down <laughs> the other side. That's just how I tend to do it. So yeah, we're just gonna add a little bit to his legs as well. And I think it just helps a teeny teeny bit. Yeah, let me know what you think. Should I add more? Should I add less? Is that better? Is that worse? But I'm, I think I'm also looking at it on the screen as well <laughs> to see how different it looks on the screen. I think I kind of, I think I'm getting happier with that. Can I bigger my screen any? Get on screen. No, not really. Oh, computers, aren't you wonderful? Um, but yeah, I think that shading's helped a little tiny bit. Um, oh, Skywolf, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you. Love the pattern on the head. Yeah. Oh, and you've made a snowy owl. Wonderful. <laughs> Steffi, loving how the colours in the elephant picture mirror your colourful hair. Coincidence. Absolutely. T how, how could that happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, total coincidence. Yeah, that's kind of my colours. <laughs> and just as well as it is, because like, people sort of see my hair colours now as my brand, so I feel it would be like difficult to change, but I love the colours. Also, it's, I haven't dyed for my hair for a wee while, I'm giving it a rest. I know there's so many people that can't do their own hair and are kind of freaking out about what they're going to do with that access to hairdressers. I totally do all my hair myself, but I'm just giving it a rest just now. Because the weather's been so nice, it's nice to be able to sit outside and it bleach out my roots and everything a little bit, just the natural way. So I'm just leaving it as it is. Right. Shall we get more onto the pattern again? Um, where have we got to? Oh, Sky Wolf's off for a little while. Okay, catch you later. Um, right, so I have my elephant stencil, for those who haven't seen, comes in the two parts. You get just the shape of the elephant. I've lost a little cutout I had lying about. But the shape of the elephant, and it's in an A4 size, but I also included an idea of some kind of patterns as well to work upon. Um, I can't even remember what white I was using before, but I've I found this lovely white, so we'll try working with this. Now the difficult thing is, am I going to be able to match up <laughs> the other ears? That's 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 an interesting thing. <laughs> Lena saying how observant the makers are. <laughs> Well, these ladies have a very good eye for design and colours and felting stuff. <laughs> but the, I think the purple and pink's a bit obvious with me. And Wally Fire, Wally's in the house, or Sandra. <laughs> good to see you. Right, let's get now. Now, this is the point where I'm going to be focusing a whole lot. You're going to see the top of my head and I'll probably forget to talk. So just chat amongst yourselves here. But I'm just trying to, I think these little dots all the way around really kind of help this a little bit. And they're reasonably simple to do. Oh, my heating is coming. I got, um in the winter, my heating totally broke. So I got a new um, boiler and controller and all that, 
all that fancy jazz and the guy sort of showed me how to work it and program it while he quickly programmed it himself but it was the winter and I didn't really pay any attention or not as much attention as I should have done so yeah yeah I'll figure that out in the spring I haven't figured it out yet <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm still trying to at the minute in time I tend to just run and when the heating comes on just quickly switch it off I haven't figured out how to turn it off properly yet so I'm going to need to find a YouTube video that shows me how to program my heating controller so I can tell it to stop coming on so if you hear rude rude farty noises that's just my radiator complaining right these are not going to match up at all really but hopefully they'll be close enough i'm sure in real life they don't match up perfectly either that's my excuse and i'm sticking to it but yeah like maybe someone paints one side and someone paints the other side or something who knows <laughs> i don't know right just that was a little a littler pinch so i'll put it down here and we'll see, this is kind of testing the limitations of the wall to see how much detail in the design I can get and it to still show up. It's it's easier to draw something, but then when you try it in felt, it's a little bit different. <laughs> but I'm still, I am loving seeing all the, what is it called? Angelina? Yes, the Angelina fibers just sparkle into this. It really does kind of bring it to life. And now sort of this this red and pink behind does kind of look like some of the sunsets we've been having uh, certainly in the uk we have been having stonking weather really beautiful weather and the sunsets have been glorious and also i'm in the middle of a housing estate you you wouldn't believe that from my walks because i i managed to get to the country within my allocated time where i'm allowed to walk um but also I'm in the housing estate, just out that window you can see the sunset. In fact, no, there's no way I'm going to talk. I think sunset's about half eight, nine o'clock, so I'm not going to keep you talking <laughs> till the sun sets. If it was, I would show you the sun setting over the houses. But hey, we'll maybe do that another night if we get a later live stream. Oh, Google, get it, shush, shush. <laughs> Um, that's just my phone attempting to figure out what I'm saying that no no can you just stop listening to me <laughs> isn't technology great no I just want you to keep on showing my picture of an elephant there we go thank you anyone else have continual problems with their phone snooping on them and going oh do you want help on this thing that you never asked for help on right now i know i've got it drawn here but here's a bit i really struggle with is trying to do a mirror image of something <sighs> for some reason it's so hard to figure out what backwards should be to forwards i <laughs> fun it makes me think um i am also for those of you that don't know i think most of you do know i am also a dog agility trainer um that's that's one of my other day jobs and quite often I'll put up, um, I'll create dog agility courses, that's like jumps and obstacles and stuff for the human and the dog to do. And we'll put up one course, or put up one kind of training exercise, and they'll say, okay, you've done that, now try and do the mirror image. And it is so funny to see how people absolutely struggle with figuring out what the mirror image of what they've just done is. <laughs> I think I... I, to start with I was doing it sensibly as kind of a, a training exercise now I think I just ask people to do it just just because it's hilarious to watch them go mirror image how does that work and it should be so easy but yeah <laughs> so I totally understand I am having trouble looking at this and going what's the mirror image of what what I've done on that side Oh, and the other thing I so have trouble with, which is which can be a problem when you're doing the dog training as well, is my left and my right. Now, it's a pain for the dog training, but I used to be a driving instructor. And that, <laughs> you would think that's quite a hardship when you're trying to tell someone to turn left or right and you don't know your left from your right. But hey, it always kind of worked. <sighs> Right. 
So with with this, what I'm trying to do to make a, a line is when I'm taking out little bits of this beautiful snow white tops, this is Corridale Lightning. As I pull it, I'm just twisting and pulling and that makes a kind of little thread. I had a bit of a plan that I was going to use... What's that word that I'm looking for? I was going to use like yarn, wool, and just pull off a ply of that. I don't know what you call the individual bits. Um, but I... <laughs> I'm slowing in the talking because I literally cannot figure out how these shapes work. Okay, it goes down like that. And, right. Yeah, I was thinking of using yarn, like a, a ply of yarn, and you totally could, and that would probably be so much easier. So, yeah, if anybody does that, um, gives that a try, let me know how that goes. I think that would be super cool. Right, I think that goes like that. Wow so difficult to figure out what the reverse of what I just did was. I think we've got it. I think it's something like that. These are not looking quite so paisley pattern as the other side, but it's still going to look cool. Um, yeah. I'll just go back on that. You could also, once you've reached reached the end of one piece like this, you, it, it's much easier just to snip it. But guess who didn't bring scissors upstairs? <laughs> Um, yeah, this th this this area I'm sitting in that looks like a dingy basement is actually my upstairs spare bed bedroom. So all my crafting stuff where you used to see me on the sofa, that's all downstairs, um, and that's probably where Mia is just now. Um, but so this is upstairs. So I don't have all my crafting stuff up here. I have to try and remember and bring things up with me. Right now, think. <laughs> Which way does this little piece go? It's like that? Like that? Oh, this isn't going to... Uh, uh, yeah, this is tough. <laughs> this is tough trying to figure out backwards. Crazy. Okay, so I think you're like that. Tell me if I'm getting this... Well, I'm not getting this wrong because it's my own invention, so I can't get it wrong. But yeah, I might be not quite doing this right but does that no that goes closer to the ear doesn't it yes where there's more space that makes a ton of sense okay so it's not quite even but eh, getting there and these will be a bit smaller because I think this ear size is a little bit smaller yeah Hopefully it will look okay. Right, and I'm just trying to. The, if you were using a piece of piece of yarn, this would be easier. It wouldn't be fibers coming coming away a little bit um, and looking quite as fuzzy. So I'm just trying to neaten up and catch each fiber. Okay. Oh, perfect. It's good enough. Um, Miss Sparkles, hello there. I'm pleased to hear you're recovered. Thank you so much. Yes, um, yes, uh, fighting fit apart from oh, ridiculous hay fever just now, but I'm dosing up on antihistamines and I will be fine. But yes, other than that, absolutely, I don't believe there's any ill effects. I did of the disease that I cannot mention I did feel that the shortness for breath lasted for a good a good couple of weeks longer than all the rest of the symptoms but I think I've got if if that's what I had I think I've got out of this pretty pretty well with hopefully no no lasting health effects but we won't know until it's possible to see doctors and things again <laughs> which I totally understand but it is tricky not to be able to nip to your doctor to get things checked up um but but yes that'll that'll all start up again at some point but yeah thank you so much miss sparkles <laughs> oh thank you you look well whatever you're doing your skin's glowing oh thank you so much that's what happens when you put a ton of light on your skin um but i always used to joke about that um people talk about 
picking out the best lighting and everything but if you put enough light on your face it bounces back so you can't see all the wrinkles it's awesome <laughs> slightly anyone who's doing video slightly overexpose yourself and you look so much better <laughs> no but thank you i've been working really hard to try and stay fit and healthy and to tire out myself and mia so we have been doing within the limits of what we think the government say we can do anyone in the uk there seems the english government is saying you can drive somewhere and you can take a picnic just so long as your walk lasts longer than your driving and your picnic so that sounds like you can go for long hikes the welsh government are saying um if you go out once for your shopping that's it you can't go out again that day and the Scottish government, I'm not entirely sure, but certainly seem to be saying we can't drive for our walks, but don't know how long, if there's a limit for how long our walks can be. So I'm trying to keep it to around what, what they used to say was the healthy level of 10,000 steps a day, which keeps me, it gives me enough scope for adventures in my local area, <laughs> at least. So I'm trying to do that um so yeah just keeping outside in the fresh air before i got sick i was doing all the belly dancing classes online and i'll have to start them up again um yeah totally but i've got i'm so i don't even know if she'll watch this but my friend shona super impressed with her i just want a big shout out to my pal shona um because she is the most sociable person i know she used to struggle to be inside one night by herself you know on her own and she's coping with this so well um we all have wibbles but she's coping so well and she's also doing the couch to 10k exercise jog jogging plan going out every day doing her runs and we're getting oh go away sorry just had a pop up on my screen um and we're getting updates seeing the pictures she's doing selfies of her sweaty self when she's finished a run but i just find that so inspirational inspirational whoa there's a new word i find that so inspirational to see the people that are like really stepping up and making the use of this you know she's still she's working from home she's still doing her job but she's going out and putting those runs in things that she wouldn't have done before which is pretty awesome <coughs> Uh, oh, Mum's saying, I think what they have said is one hour from your front door. Cool. I mean, I don't time myself, but it's, it's maybe a smidge longer than an hour, but I am literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, I might even, should I share some of my pictures with you all? Um, just because. <laughs> um, for no reason whatsoever. Um, but for any of you that aren't on aren't following me anywhere i will if i can find it oh no that's the totally wrong thing i'm clicking on um yeah i'll show you my my latest adventures because it's cool and it's fun if oh facebook is so so slow um here we go facebook can you hurry up and do what i clicked on and so many pop-ups and oh annoying stuff right so share the screen there we go right so um this i start off my walk there's a bit of waste ground just across the road from me which is where um i'm just felting while i'm talking there's a bit of waste ground ground across the road from me where there used to be factories and they've pulled them down like years ago and it's starting to rewild life and whenever i walk there there's butterflies all around the place um, so I cannot confirm or deny if I was seeing that butterfly landing on plants and getting my phone out trying to set up my camera and then it flew away so I was kind of chasing it without trying to freak it out chasing it from plant to plant and I finally got a shot of the little butterfly I think he is adorable and then as I say I've been missing water I've been missing rivers so I searched Google Maps and found this river down a little country road not far from my house, you know, within walking distance. I can't figure out how to get down to the water, but it was sure lovely just being able to see the little river. That was really nice. 
um, <clears throat> and we're, that's just the other view from the other side of the river which it it's just great and I, I was looking and going hmm I might have to slightly jump over a fence or something to get to that but there's nothing in that field and there's no one about there so I'm thinking I might see about going down there to give to give Mia a bit of a paddle Mia and me a bit of a paddle um, and this I just I just shared this because um, Mia when I first got her oh she was she was astray when I got her so she probably ran away from the people she was with in the first place she had zero recall she was absolutely untrustworthy off the road um, off the lead um, but here this is a country lane it's a dead end there's nothing there and I knew there was no livestock or anything about but she's totally so much more trustworthy just to let her off the lead to have a little mooch about so she kind of enjoyed that and this oh yeah this um where I jumped over the little burn the little river and ducked under a fence and climbed a bit of a hill in the middle of nowhere the picture makes everything look a little bit closer we're on top of a hill here and then there's a couple of fields and then there's a motorway and then there's the airport but I was just that's my first time I've seen the airport since lockdown and it was amazing just seeing like a dozen planes parked up there I was like wow of course the planes have nowhere else to go that was so interesting to see just a little traffic jam of planes on the tarmac um, and yeah just some more views from the top of the hill <laughs> um yeah so that's that's what i did that was my day and let's get back to what we're actually supposed to be doing two cameras and there we go <laughs> yeah a little a little distraction um Okay, let's get back onto this guy. Um, so I wanna, I've been putting off the decoration on his face because it's quite a lot. Um, there's this beautiful, large, is it some kind of lotus flower or something? But yeah, we'll see what we can manage in wool. But I wanna do the best I can because that looks like so gorgeous. So I'm trying to make the little pointed petal. I won't get all of the detail obviously but a little petal because those who weren't in the streams earlier I wasn't sure about adding all the design to the elephant or just leaving him as he was but when I got started it's a little bit honestly it's kind of addictive just to it and put in these strange little details and see it appear <laughs> so I'm just intrigued how it will turn out um, oh Haley's house hello there how are you doing good to see everybody um, yeah so what's what's happening in all your lives let me know in the chat give give me you know give me an idea how you're all getting on what projects you're working on uh, as well as a, a dragon a felted dragon hand puppet awesome um but yeah what projects are you doing what are you doing to keep busy or are you just enjoying the sunshine um and is everybody okay let's let's have that let's have that check-in <laughs> with all of us um as i said here i've been doing i've been doing pretty good i, I think like everybody we have good days and bad days but I try and make sure and do something positive every day, make sure and get those walks in. Um, yeah, I can very failed gothic type person with going out and getting a suntan, but I am loving it. I love to spend a bit of time. I, I'm not the biggest fan of just sunbathing, although it was nice just to chill out with a book um, yesterday yesterday yes yesterday that was really nice but i'm not the biggest sunbather but just being able to get out and doing walks is super super important and super fun and doing these adventures finding places i've never been before even though i won't lie today when i was over the fence and well over the over the river because right confessions when i jumped over the river um the other bank was a little bit more soggy than I thought it was going to be <laughs> and when I jumped I was like 
I'm not going to bother come back this way. <laughs> but I found another way to come back so I didn't get stranded in a farmer's field. That would have been stupid. So don't don't do stupid things when going on adventures, but still still cool things. Whoops. Right. Um Oh, Hallie's house. Thank you. Sorry to hear about Ben. Thank you. Oh, you're picking up your puppy this evening. Oh, congratulations. Any tips on initial pot potty training? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the toilet training the puppy, the main thing is two two things. Consistency. Take, your, take the puppy out all the time and give them chances to succeed, basically. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the basic guidelines. If the puppy's just woke up, take them out. If the puppy's just eaten or drunk, take them out. If the puppy's had something exciting happen, take them out. If the puppy's not gone to the toilet in half an hour, take them out. If you take them out and they don't go to the toilet, then I, I like crate training. Um, my dogs love their crates. Some people don't like it. My dogs love their crates. It's like a safe, cozy den. Um, Mia, like when there's fireworks happening or stuff, that's her safe place. She'll go in and and wait wait for the sky banging to stop. So I find crates are super good. Some people don't like them, but you can if you're if there's a time you're not going to keep an eye on your puppy, like you want to go and cook or something, it can be good when they're tired and everything. Just pop them in the crate. To train them so they like being in the crate. Don't lock them in and have them freak out. But pop them in the crate so they can chill out in their safe space and you can go and do stuff without worrying that they're going to go to the toilet everywhere. Um, but yeah, just really vigilant. And depending on the breed, but dogs can get can ca catch on pretty quick to toilet training but don't don't get mad at them they can't they don't have a hundred percent control over that feature of themselves until they're about six months old it'll get better and it'll get better but have a lot of carpet cleaner on hand um i never used puppy pads um because I didn't want them to learn to go in the house at all. Um, that was just my my feeling on it. But yeah, um, and ha or training in general, as as positive and as fun as you can. I in in my mind, the most important thing is to think that dogs aren't bad. Um, th this is something that a lot of people don't don't understand is that dogs aren't bad they're just dogs and um, they do things like <laughs> this is my scientifically thinking of things but they do things based on their personality and what they see about and how how that works out for them will will define what this um will define what they do next time as it were so if they do something that you really really like and you make something nice happen for them if you're happy if you give them a treat if you give them a fuss or whatever they'll be like oh that was cool i'll do that again um in general people disagree with me on this but it's always been the case in general if you have a good relationship with them and you motivate them and you train them what you want them to do you don't really need to punish them for doing the things that you don't want for super important like you would never you would never punish your dog for going to the toilet in the house because they don't they often won't associate going to the toilet in the house they'll associate oh when that when she watches me go to the toilet she gets mad at me so i'm going to go behind the couch <laughs> um and stuff like that so it's better it's better to try and make sure that they you set them up for success. You you said you know if you don't want them to chew on things, put them away for just now and give them the things that they can chew on. Um, so many people, it's like, how do I stop my dog chasing sheep? Firstly, put it on a lead. But people are like, no, I want to be able to stop my dog chasing sheep without having to resort to using a lead. 
cats. I, I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm actually thinking about going back to the, the dog training channel and doing some more videos again because there there's quite a lot. Um, there seems to be a big movement just now for people desperate to train dogs without treats again, which, I don't know, for me that just seems seems silly. Dogs have to eat. They enjoy eating. Um, and it, it it's like taking away one really powerful tool in your toolbox for no reason other than vanity um and yeah it doesn't make dogs fat overfeeding your dog makes them fat it doesn't make them dependent on bribes um training wrongly does that um anyway i'll stop this is very off topic of this channel but yeah anyway <laughs> um the makers doing a lotus flower as a live stream on monday oh everyone you've got to ch uh, yeah totally check in for that so tomorrow the makers if you're not following them they have the youtube channel and they've been doing loads of lives which have been fantastic so they're doing a lotus flower on monday fantastic and uh, more likely a water lily on a la large leaf totally awesome oh i will have to i keep missing your live streams i remember and i go i'm gonna watch it and then before when I say something happens, I either walk too far or I fall asleep. But I do catch them on the replay. <laughs> but I will totally try and catch that. Still cold. Really awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone try and get the, the makers. That sounds fun. Uh, Lily Tree's been sorting out craft stuff. Making headbands with button ear savers. Oh, yes, with the ear savers. So, yes. I know <laughs> English pan that was terrible and veg seeds are beginning to sprout yeah mine too I seem to have killed my lettuce um but that'll grow I'll get I'll plant some more up I'll, I'll plant some more up further away from me because the further plants are away from me the better chance they have to live <laughs> which is really sad um <clears throat> but but yeah so I'll plant up some more stuff but I've had some sproutings that I think are, <coughs> I think are my tomato plants because I didn't label them, but it looks like tomato plants and red kale have come up and other stuff isn't dead as well. So I'm proud of me. Oh yeah, my strawberries are doing awesome. So getting there so far. Um, makers agree with you on the puppy toilet training great time of the year to have a puppy absolutely the only worry at this time of year at this time in the world is a um, couple of things to really look into sorry I do this off top topic but the dog training totally my thing um, watch out about um, what is the word I'm looking for I just lost it um, but dogs not wanting to be left alone um good grief wow head not working but um separation anxiety yeah and watch out for that um it's really important while we're at home more if you're at home more your dog would get used to that um and that would become the normal so when you go back to work or you go back to normal life your puppy will totally freak out being left alone so build up slowly just being able to leave them happy don't make it a stressful experience but you want about to you know if you get them used to a crate the crate's an awesome thing and you can maybe give them their dinner in there and then once they're comfortable in there shut the door while you're still next to them and then maybe while they're calm the next day take a step or two away till eventually you'll be able to feed them in the crate while you go into the kitchen and do something and then work on they're in the crate while you step outside for a second puppies will freak out if you leave them if you don't tra if you don't get them used to it because it, it's a natural thing you know a, a wolf cub all by itself that's that's a, a dangerous time for them so but puppies will freak out so you have to teach them that it's okay it's chilled to be left left alone so that's a super important one um and number two is socialization it's 
hopefully <laughs> things will lighten up as the puppies of an age that you can go to puppy classes and things but and well look um <laughs> when you're out and about people are gonna squee and be all excited with puppies but yeah um socialization have a plan when you're out and about walking and thinking of the things that the puppy needs to see because if it sees them before about 12 weeks of age then they're more chilled they're more accepting of them when they're adults so certain things horses cars trains different kinds of people this is the crazy one like i worked super hard with this with ben i had ben from a tiny puppy and um i worked so hard on the socialization but I didn't meet a blind person until he was a good bit older and he freaked out. Now, he was never an aggressive dog, but he was like, what is that? What is wrong with them? Um, sorry, that's a terrible thing to say. But he was like freaking out. So it can be the case. Um, think of all different, even like floor textures, walk over a bridge, walk under a bridge walk in different types of areas and trying to meet different types of dogs which is going to be different they're not going to necessarily be able to meet face to face to play but just walking and calmly rewarding the puppy for seeing a dog you know just seeing it in the distance ago that was good that was nice of you <laughs> um yeah you, you just socialization yeah that those are well three toilet training separation anxiety and socialization they're the big ones that the the other things just just train kindly reward what you like and try and set things up so what you don't like doesn't happen um heart and soul hey there how are you going happy sunday um Oh, at least you were going to go to a puppy training weekly club, but not poss possible. Wish me luck. Hey, you can totally do it. It It's a little more difficult at this time, but the internet is fantastic. There's tons of resources there. Make sure you're looking at positive trainers. The, the most important thing, it, when you're going to a class or when you're not going to a class, but you have to believe in the trainer there's lots of different styles out there and some people are a bit more harsh and it's my my opinion my opinion based on science as well but what you'll find some of the harsher trainers think they have really well behaved dogs but what they have is shut down dogs if you look at a dog that just doesn't it doesn't pull on the lead, it doesn't bark, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. And you think, oh, that's fantastic, it's such a good dog. But it's like, it just doesn't want to do anything because it's constantly told off for doing the wrong things. Um, whereas you'll see a more positively trained dog will be mo more energetic, more happy, more connection-like. If, if you punish the dog a lot when it walks nicely on the lead it's heads down it's not so much looking at you whereas if if you're I, I don't have pictures of Mia just now but Mia isn't just good on the lead when Mia's good on the lead she's prancing and she's grinning up at you and she's saying are you seeing how good I'm being <laughs> there is there's more of that relationship there so look at how their dogs are with them are their dogs happy and lively and it's also what um what people see as as well behaved and not because i remember uh, years ago i was watching crafts um the the dogs going into the ring going sort of round the ring for their lap of honor before they did the agility run and no the heel work to music that was it and heel work to music if you haven't seen the super trained dogs performing tricks to music on cue they're fantastically trained and someone was commenting about how badly trained this dog was because it was coming into the ring but basically it was prancing in front of the owner and barking at her and they were like that is so badly behaved but i just saw it, it was just so joyful it was saying yes let's get started let's do this thing it wasn't running amok it was just saying to its owner hello yay we're going to do our favorite thing together so it depends what what you want but i much prefer the slightly cheeky full of fun dog that wants to work with you to the dog that just doesn't that it doesn't want to do wrong 
if that makes sense. It, it's it's fearful of doing wrong, so it just doesn't do stuff. Well, yeah, don't get me started on dog training. <laughs> right. Anyway, should we do should we do some more of the elephants? Oh, we're getting there. I want to do a little. I can't, I've got such beautiful little decorations in in each of these things that I should have just thought that's absolutely not possible in a tiny little felt. But we're getting something. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, what are you what are you all working on? I don't think did I ask that? I probably asked that, but any <laughs> anyway, let me all know what projects you're working on. Apart from this, I still have a good few orders which I'm very thankful for. Currently I've got a Dalmatian, not a Dalmatian, a Dash Hound and a cute little scruffy pup that I'm I'm working on the both of them to just now and I have two little bodies that I can't remember what they're gonna be yet. Um but yes those are those are the day job ones and then we have the elephant for funsies, we will have the tiger soon, we have the maker's box which is the sleepy fox that I'm super looking forward to but this is great I've got too many projects to do and the Shiba Inu dog kit that I'm excited to try as well because that looks like it'll be a slightly different process from what I normally do as well so yay lots of fun things to do um yeah I'm trying to think if I'm doing anything that's not <laughs> that's not felting I do want to the tiger that I showed you um, the stencil, I want to do a, a digital drawing of a tiger as well. I think that fur texture and everything with all the stripes and things, that could be a fun a fun challenge. It might make me or break me, but <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my plans so far. So plenty of things to do and also loads of videos to make. Um, I've got level two of the Etsy Academy training is up that I have to look at but I kind of avoided it so far um, but we'll see that might be one I can do an actual training on because I have to do I think it's three trainings in the year for the Etsy Academy so we might have we might have an official video at some point which will be fun um, also I want to talk about Etsy stopping showing certain shops that's interesting i understand why but yeah i want to cover that e-rank's got some cool new features coming out some of you all know know what it's going to be but oh, so excited i've known about this for like six months longer than i've known about this for ages and i've been so excited so video of that coming up as soon as i'm allowed to <laughs> um yeah so much so much to do little triangly things coming down his trunk and then a few more splotches and then I think he's done so yeah he's kind of looking okay I think <laughs> let me know if you see anything that you think I should be doing or doing more or you know bits that just don't look so right because I'm making this up as I go along <laughs> there's no unlike unlike the wonderful makers ladies who have their kits that what they're doing it's all planned in advance and they're they're super know what they're doing i just make it up a little bit as i go along <laughs> we're getting there and this okay this has taken three videos to do but over many weeks this was supposed to be done like in about week one of lockdown <laughs> <laughs> but life gets in the way and that's okay too oh i can hear the birds tweeting out the window it has been absolutely lovely to see the sun get a suntan <laughs> so nice i'm wondering if see if we'd felted this down really flat if some kind of a fabric pen or something would have been good to do these kind of bits on as well that might be something i'll practice at a different time 
Um, but so far it's something completely different that I've never done before and I think this is a cool challenge um, <laughs> challenge yourself to do something like trying to do all these details in felting is a different challenge for sure <laughs> but I find if you challenge yourself to do different things if you challenge yourself if you always make big sculptures, make little sculptures, if you always do one type of thing, make a different type of thing. And then when you come back to your normal thing, you might be a little bit better at it. You've learnt some different skills and experiences. All right, how's that looking? That's okay. I think we've just got a f couple of little embellishments I can add. Oh and I was going to do her little her little jewellery. <laughs> it's it's not it's not slave chains, it's bracelets to make her look pretty. That's that's my thinking now. And uh, just cuz I we'll see. I I'm just thinking the pop of yellow gold color might be nice there or it might be too much. Yeah, what do, what do you all think? Little little bracelets here yay or nay <laughs> let me know in the comments and i'll i'll see what i think Ooh, the wind's getting up outside too um oh hey Lee, thank you um it's lovely something different thank you so much it's it's very different um oh i'm missing some chat here hang on Uh, Haley's, I've recently opened up my shop again. Now they're charging tax. How has this changed? Um, yeah. It's... Uh, Haley, you in the UK... Well, wherever you are, um, Etsy has started charging onto, the, onto whatever price you've put in. They've started adding the sales tax if someone from that state buys buys from you they add on the sales tax and Etsy pay that sales tax to that state um so as far as i can tell um the advice that i got is that that's not really something we have to worry about Etsy's dealt with it and yeah we never get that money so it's it, it's nothing to do with us kind of um but i will look into that some more um yeah <laughs> Oh, Rosani's in the house. Hello there. How are you doing? Good to see you. Um, what is it? Hi, Pam, and everyone looks great. Thank you so much. Um, the makers started out as a doing it as we go along and turned into a kit. Awesome. <laughs> Love the elephant. Really beautiful. Thank you so much. And guys, if you're looking for some gorgeous colours for your elephant, the makers are have really fantastic fibres. Um, I'm trying to remember, some of these are definitely makers. Some of them, I think, <laughs> like this stuff. Oh, I dropped it. This stuff, which is the pink as well, again, I bought when I started felting over a decade ago. I got all excited in hobby craft. I saw these little um, packs with all the colours in and I got the entire rainbow. It's got like all pinks and everything. And I can probably show you better with the actual pink. The stuff is revolting. It was so expensive and the quality of this is horrible. It's horrible to felt with, but it's okay to flat felt with. So go to the makers. They've got good stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I think some, I'm pretty sure some of my purples came from you. But yes, I've got so many stuff lying, <laughs> so much wool lying about the place in random colours. <laughs> but yes, I think for 2D felting, it seems that almost anything works. <laughs> Some of it you'll find nicer than others, but it, it's all kind of working. But for the 3D felting, yeah, some of the, the horrible stuff, that's got so much lumps of vegetable matter in and just random lumps and... Some bits of it seem to felt fine and others not and it doesn't play well with other colours. I don't know how they managed to make something so horrible. And the same if you see 
the number of people that buy like some of the cheap introductory kits from places and they get it's the most stupid thing the kits include first of all a polystyrene bowl <laughs> um, when in reality just a bit of core wool rolled up into a bowl would do um, but they've got the polystyrene balls and then they have merino tops as your felting stuff um, which tops is this brushed out stuff which is harder to felt a base with and merino is like some of the hardest fit fibers to felt with and also some of the most expensive so it literally makes zero sense to put a kit with such rubbish in where you could put a decent core wool that they could roll into a ball and work from that you could put some nice easy felting fibers so yeah <laughs> um Hayley's house, yes, you're in the UK. They took £8 odd on a £160 sale. Uh, did they take that off of you um, or add that onto the customer? <laughs> I'm trying to do quick maths in my head what £8 on a £160 quid would be. Hmm. Yeah, that's a strangely small amount. <laughs> um because they are on our chart yeah also probably something you won't have seen before as well yes they're charging us VAT on not our sales but on like their transaction fee any of their fees they're charging us VAT on as well um, which is not something the Deetsy is getting that's no doubt something that the the government picked up and said oh we need this money so all the all your transaction fees so if you sell something yeah for you VAT only VAT only for anyone who doesn't know VAT in the UK is value added tax it's a tax added onto anything that's sold um, so what they're doing it's not on the price of our item but your £160 sale that has a, you can't remember it's like 5% a 5% charge for the payment processing and however much that is like seven pounds or something that seven pounds i'm making up numbers not yeah anyway but whatever if you were charged seven pounds for payment processing then they would also charge on that seven pounds they would charge 20 percent vat and the same you're also charged the transaction fee so however much that transaction fee you'll also get charged VAT on that as well and yes you do put that through your taxes that you know that you can say that's a charge you've had that's an additional charge yeah it's a pain they never used to do that but the UK government must have caught up with them or I think it's a EU thing and they're just saying like uh, yeah you've kind of got a charge for that because the payment processing fee and your transaction fee are fees we're paying EC for a service therefore we have to be taxed on that that's that's how it is um and yes you had other bits charged too yeah the I like numbers I'm good at numbers but EC numbers are hard work to figure out um yeah so I'd say something like what when you're putting up a listing it's it's not quite it, you would be doing yourself a favor if you think of whatever price your listing's going to be think of adding 20% for charges taxes you know everything else so that your profit's okay just think of whatever you need to sell that for add 20% it, that's more than it should be but that that will keep you right so you can have relisting fees and everything else um oh makers yeah very good point be careful buying wool from china their animal welfare is not great our awesome yes our wool is from non mules sheep the she yeah <laughs> um yes i've looked into that uh, yes that's that's something apart from that cheap stuff and when I'm testing kits and things but all my any creations I'm making my my wool always comes from non-amused sheep 
and um, where possible small breed sheep trying to support local breeders and things or small companies like like the makers um but but yes the animal welfare is super important and i'm not i i will get this stream into trouble if i explain how they mused mules sheep um but certain countries it, like uh, it's really to look out for especially with things like merino wool again that can come from mass producers in australia that they have such large amounts of sheep that uh, they're not bad people at all but they have to uh, their practices can sometimes be not so great and yes yeah, china's animal welfare needs a boot up the backside as well I, I don't think anyone will deny that um not all people in china but the rules and regulations are not what we expect um our wolves from non-mule sheep um our wolves gots certified i don't know what that is but i'm sure it's awesome and okio text but yeah so there you go good to know again the makers or oh, always make sure good quality good welfare wool and that is important it's important to look into these things and your customers want to know but it's important for the animals there's there's no reason that farming for wool has to be cruel i think i i told you it's all um many years ago now and um, when i was looking into getting alpaca fleeces um i was on holiday with my mum and we'd found an alpaca farm and we went to visit it and it was so nice to be able to see the animals and see what then and i included that in my eighty listings i think my mum did as well basically the alpaca were on a hillside next to a, a water reservoir so there was completely organic farming there because it had to be else that would get into the the water supply um they were pretty much pets first and foremost but they needed shearing like you would cut like you would trim your dog basically so that the wool was taken from that they had great lives and vets were called you know if they needed anything and they were just absolutely adorable happy animals <laughs> so that was so nice to be able to see all of that um Haley's house what about those who don't earn 12,500 and don't have to pay um no the the VAT we all we all have to pay VAT when we're buying something like when you go to a shop and buy a sofa or something the VAT is added onto that um and the VAT thresholds much higher than 12,500 uh, yeah the 12,500 is your personal tax um allowances i think but yes we we do have to pay the VAT because that's for a service that we're purchasing it's the same as going and buying a sofa there's VAT on it it would just be if you're over the threshold for VAT then you have to do a lot more accounting fiddliness that you uh, it, it, it's complicated <laughs> um, but yeah for us normal people it, it's actually correct that we have to pay it CJ Phoenix hello there um good morning got up a little late this morning I, hey lions lions are the best I love lions I think I might have a little bit done that myself. I had a super sleep. The only problem is because my hay fever is horrific just now, lying in means I'm late for my antihistamines, which means I'm like a zombie, like a creaky, gummy eyed zombie for the first part of the morning. But there's no one to see anyway. Um. oh thank you so much sending me lots of love thank you so much right right back at you all uh elephant looks awesome thank you i think we're kind of done with him i'm just smoothing him off and fiddling about anyone else do that um who was i talking to the other day um yeah a friend of mine just mentioned how you can spend so much time on the final fiddly bits that you don't need to i am so bad at this at christmas time when my orders are through the roof and i'm working flat out i can spend an entire evening felting over and over the the body of a dog that 
literally I've spent the whole evening and I've made it 1% firmer that did not need doing at all but you can just get stuck in not knowing where to finish um, so yeah I think I'm pretty much at that stage with this elephant not knowing where to finish I'm just kind of <coughs> kind of randomly stabbing him right so you guys can get a you've actually got a better view of him than I have so let me know is there anything else you think that he needs to do he is way off to the side isn't he <laughs> I didn't plan that very well how did I not even notice that till just now I don't mind um but yeah is there anything else i need to be adding anything that would look a bit better if i did little bits of shading little bits of doodling let me know what you think and if there's anything else i can add to him but yeah i'm just playing about tidying up but he's not bad actually i think i'm reasonably happy with him um Haley, you swear you've charged. Th th you swear they've charged you. Um, and you really, it's so difficult. It takes me forever to figure out. Um, Etsy's billing methods are terrible, um, and it's so hard to find the breakdown of everything. So you kind of have to go through everything and see what you can. But message them message them and ask them to explain and they'll come back with some really useless explanation to start with so message them again and tell them you don't understand what they're saying message them again until the right person can come to you and explain it um <laughs> my lid's shut Yeah, the makers. Eighty-five thousand is the the VAT threshold for business. I knew it was it was high. And if if anyone's business, like I hope people's businesses are at eighty-five thousand. I'm certainly not there. Um, but if you get to that point, I would say if you're at that point, then you should probably be hiring an accountant unless you really know what you're doing. We can bumble away with our smaller businesses and sort of chip away at doing our expenses but by that stage you're probably going to save more money with someone who knows what they're doing but again if it's totally not making sense it might be worthwhile getting just a one-off time getting paying someone to have a look into everything and explain it for you because yeah that i every tax <laughs> tax time I go through all the numbers from Etsy and I'm like I have to spend a good couple of days just figuring out what they're on about because it changes every year and it never seems to add up so I do I do my best but yeah it takes a bit to figure it out so yeah if if you've got a friend who's an accountant and is looking to get paid in in whiskey or wine even better but yeah it, it could be not a bad thing to get an expert to check um lily he's lovely perhaps define his eyes a bit yeah i'm not entirely sure where the eyes are in this <laughs> now i think they'd probably be somewhere about here but i'm not sure how to define them he has no eyes <laughs> it's abs oh yeah did we did we decide if we're gonna do his little his little bracelets let's let's try them see how it looks and because i've got a kind of gold colored right i don't even have to felt this in really so i will i'll make a bit and you guys can tell me do do we want the bracelets do we not want the bracelets that's not neat at all i'm not sure if that's that's a finishing touch or if it's too distracting because the legs are quite dark hmm what it, you guys let me know i i don't want to spoil your opinion there <laughs> i'm not entirely sure yeah i'm trying to figure out how i can define his eyes because you yeah that isn't <laughs> that's totally annoying me now um where would the eye, i'm sure the eyes would be sort of here they're quite far back in the head i believe 
how could I draw an elephant without thinking of eyes? I was too distracted with the idea of doing the the fancy patterns. I, I forgot to do eyes. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, typical. Um, uh, the makers, did I miss you lifting the work off the mat occasionally? Hope he's not fastened on. Um, I haven't done in this round, but yes, it is. You're quite right. It's something I've mentioned while we were doing this to start up. He shouldn't be totally stuck on because we were only doodling. But if you are doing a 2D, you do have to lift it off the mat. Oh, shall we look at the back? Let's I'm such a child. Sometimes the backs are awesome and sometimes they're terrible. Ah, boring! <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it's great. But this, because I felt it the back, I, I felt it the white. I couldn't find my pre felt that I've got, so it's kind of thicker than usual. Oh, can you see? There's some, there's some thin bits I have to sort that out. Yeah. Usual, it's usually it would be on a more felted piece to start with so that the your pattern actually shows up on the back pretty cool but yeah not the case but yes thank you the makers are quite right you need to lift lift and reposition but because i was just doing the detailing today it wasn't i knew it wasn't going to stick because i've i've <laughs> done that loads but thank you so much for the reminder that is important to say to anyone because every stab you're going through into the mat as you can see take some fibers through and you can totally fuse the peeps onto the mat so as you're going every so often lift and make sure it's not stuck um uh Haley's, oh he's lovely will you be selling these thank you so much um i don't think so I've occasionally put up things that I've done in streams, like on my e eBay shop, um, just because I've run out of space. But just now I'm filling up. I don't think you can even see it. Just now I'm playing around with filling up my my shelf of felty stuff behind. Um, I I haven't decided, but in general, in general, no. And the stencil for him is free on Ben McFuzzy Lugs or Pam Duffy's Felting Friends. Also, I will in the future be putting up my stencils, be putting up stencils to sell in my Mia's Paw Prints shop. Um, but they'll be like a quid or two quid or something. I'm not, <laughs> they're not that difficult to do. Um, but yes, I don't think I'll be selling them. I d haven't decided. Um, uh, Rosani on the sides I think that's yes that's the eyes are on the sides and I think we only had two yays for the ba bracelet oh and CJ is no bracelets wild and free <laughs> Lily sorry didn't mean to create an eye issue <laughs> no problem at all <laughs> oh I know something I was going to do Where did, I, did I have any white left over I do um, I just want to define... Oh, you. You get back there. I just want to define this little bit here, if I can. And then I think we're done, and I'm just, like, really wasting time. <laughs> um, but I wanted to make this, like, a kind of headdressy piece. So connect the dots here. We'll see how that looks. It might look good, but it was annoying me. So let's see how it works. Maybe, maybe's I, maybe's no. So I'm just connecting up these to make it look more like it's a kind of an actual headdress rather than just dots on him. I don't know why that just it it looked to me like that's what it needed to be. Maybe. <laughs> um, I've been made that a bit too thin. Yeah, 
something a bit different anyway <laughs> right guys i think we have nearly we've pretty much finished this guy i think we pretty much finished this guy like half an hour ago um but yeah um <laughs> you've seen all the stages from me being super happy with them to disappointed to i think i've come out of this the other side i'm kind of happy with him again i think he's got a lot of character i think some of the shading really helped here define bits and pieces and pop him out from the background so yeah um so as ever i'll give you like five more minutes if you have any questions comments concerns anything else and then i will disappear off and get me tea and i hope you'll have an absolutely awesome day week remember check out the makers stream tomorrow for their their flower uh lily lily something can't remember <laughs> i can't remember what i said an hour ago um but remember and check out their regular live streams to help you get through just now um and yeah that's that's about it i i have actually run out of things to say which <laughs> is amazing for me thank you all so very much for hanging out it really means the world to me thank you all for your kind words as well um i hope everyone's doing okay and yeah keep our little crafty creative community going um and yeah have as great a time as you can stay safe y'all <laughs> right how do i switch this thing off <laughs>